An alternative that we could do is do a coronectomy, which means we cut off the crown, leave the root. And what I like to do on my coronectomies, I just don't cut the crown off. I literally go in like. Yo, what up? It's a tip of the week. And today we're gonna discuss what happens when your patient has a paresthesia. All right, guys, if you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. I'm a conscious dental surgeon, and all I do is I focus on extractions, implants, and sedation. And if you are a dentist who wants to get better in surgery and want to do better in implants, this is the channel for you. See, as a concierge dental surgeon, I go to different offices doing surgeries, and I've been working with about 30 different dentists here in the Houston area. The whole purpose of this channel is to have doctors smile after surgery. And this channel was born out of a lot of trauma for me and my family. And I thought to myself, the best way in which I could give back to the community and the world at large is to share the tips and the tricks that I've gained over the last 10 years and 10,000 surgical procedures. So. If you're that doctor and wants to learn more, hit the like button, smash subscribe, and share with your friends. I don't want you to be a squeezer. If you don't know what a squeezer is, go into some of the previous videos and learn what a squeezer is. That's an individual I don't like. And if you're that individual, cut off the video right now. All right? So let's jump into the tip. So, I was at the bank and I was literally just coming in to deposit some funds and the teller asked me, hey, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a doctor. She was like, what kind of doctor? I was like, oh, I'm a dentist, I do um, surgery. She was like, really? I was like, yeah. She, she was like, oh man, I gotta tell you about my tooth. And I'm like, all right, let's hear it. So she goes to, and immediately starts pointing to her left side of her jaw and I'm like, oh man. So she's telling me, hey, I had this tooth taken out about a year ago and I'm still having some numbness. And I'm like, and she's like, what do you think's going on? I'm thinking to myself like, oh crap. So I'm not one to throw a doctor under the bus. Like I don't do that. I don't think it's appropriate because nobody wins. A patient gets pissed off and then the doctor was under some probably some very challenging scenarios and it's just not a good place to be. So I was just like, all right, let's chat. So I asked her what went on. She was like, I went, been going to my family doctor for the last 15 years. And when they were treating me, they took out this tooth. They said it was really, really hard. But from the time I've been having numbness along my jaw up into my lip. And I'm like, Ugh. I was like, so how long has it been there? She was like a year. And I'm like, she was like, what can you do? And I'm like, so I'm doing all these facial gestures in my mind, of course, because I don't want to alert her like, yo, somebody may have really screwed this one up or she wasn't given all the information that she should have when the doctor took on this case. So she goes to say, hey, what do you think I should do? And I'm like, OK, so what happened? So she's telling me what happened. I was like, Ugh. she's telling me more. Ugh. And I'm like, all right, so I don't want to critique that doctor because I don't know the scenario. I don't know what happened during the time frame. I don't know what was said. So I was just like, let me give you guys some tips that you could use when you are faced with this scenario. So first things first, I wanted to pull up this x-ray because this is an x-ray that one of my one of the doctors sent to me and they're wanting to have their patient treated. And I thought this was an excellent case to highlight because it looks very straightforward to do. Now, if you haven't taken out a lot of teeth, you'd be like, yeah, right. Well, first things first, what I like to do is tip number one is this. Highlight all the procedures that we're doing. That's called in medicine a timeout. We also do it in dentistry, but it's not really highlighted that much. So I, first things first, I say, here's your wisdom teeth. One, two, three, and four. And I then go to tell them, hey, here's your nerve right here. And I zoom in on, I ask them, hey, can you see this? And I show them both sides and I let them know, hey, on the x-rays, it's this little dark area that's running through here. Now, once again, this is not her x-ray. This is an x-ray that another doc sent me. So I'm looking at her case and I'm like, okay, this is probably a good case to highlight. So after I show what teeth were taken care of, then I show her the inferior nerve. And we're gonna focus on that today. I want to share with you these tips before I finish the story. So you let them know what teeth were taken care of, then you highlight the inferior nerve. Then you go on to say is this, hey, these teeth look in my realm pretty straightforward. And 
even though there's this infialveolar nerve running right past this third molar and this 12 year molar and this first molar and it's sitting on this premolar here now i really don't think that this was a funny looking panel i really think that this was like an actual panel so there's no changes i think this is just how the patient's anatomy is but when you look at this it's like yo this is crazy so in this particular situation number one is this let the patient know the pros and cons alternatives hey number one if we go to take out this tooth there's likely having numbness hint hint write that down there's a likely having numbness and tell them why say hey the reason why this will happen is because if the nerve were to be disturbed note that disturbed not damaged not damage disturb damage and disturb are the same connotation but in the mind disturb is different from damage but they basically highlight the same thing so with that being stated let your patient know there's likely to having disturbance to your nerve this way when it happens they can say oh well i knew and for all you specialists out there say the same exact thing take your time be like yo this tooth or sight may give you paresthesia like it is possible i've had two of my three in my career and two resolved one did not and i let her know hey it wasn't advanced like well yeah it was advanced like this but i let her know hey this is what can happen and once they understand that and know most patients are like all right go ahead and move forward tip number two after you let them know where their teeth are then you give them pros and cons alternatives then the next thing i want you to do is say hey an alternative that we could do is do a coronectomy which means we cut off the crown leave the root and what i like to do on my coronectomies i just don't cut the crown off i literally go and like put a divot in a purchase in the furcation so that when the patient comes back or if they come back saying hey these teeth are starting to come out it's easy for me to go in there snap the roots in two and i could just pluck and pull and they're gone about their day so that's my little secret tip i give you for doing coronectomies once that's done then if you still having issues tip number three then if you decide to get the teeth out and they're a little wiggly and you get them out and they're really easy to come out then get some dexamethasone about four milligrams or six milligrams and inject it into the site not hitting bone or hitting tissue all you're going to do is just suck out all the blood get dexamethasone squirt it into the socket put some gauze over the top have the patient bite down then give them a Medrol dose pack, which is another steroid. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna decrease the amount of inflammation around that nerve. So if the blood vessels start spazzing, it's gonna put pressure on that nerve and that nerve will then cause there to be some disturbances. Very similar to when I would rest my elbow or when you would rest your elbow on the side and say, hey, my finger feels funny or I hit my funny bone. It's the same thing in the nerve. It just kind of shuts off. So those are the three to four things that you should do when preparing your patient for a paresthesia in the event that they're going to have a paresthesia surgically the other side and i may reserve this for part two so what to do when your patient does have a paresthesia part two this is part one so this there's going to be a part two to this all right guys so i'm going to end this tip right now i believe i've given you enough information that's going to literally help you smile after your surgery. So right now, click the link, hit the like button, smash subscribe and share this with your friends. And once again, stay tuned for part two of what to do when your patient has a paresthesia. This video talked about the pre-surgical phase and dismissing the patient. On the next tip, I'm gonna tell you what you should do when your patients come back and they're still experiencing a paresthesia. So there you have it guys, I'm Dr. Jared Williams and my focus is for you. Yeah, you to smile after surgery. Make it a great one.